Kia ora, welcome to Bus Daz. Taking advantage of uh, freight starting to move around parts of the world again, um, I've been shopping. Let me show you what I bought. So not actually from AliExpress, although uh, I was going to buy it from AliExpress and then started talking to the manufacturer. Um, I have a 5 kilowatt diesel liquid heater. This is tiny, right? Look at that. That's, that is not a big unit. And it puts out 5 kilowatts. This is from JP Heaters. Now, uh, from all my research, I think that they're probably the best Chinese heater manufacturer out there and that they do the best job of copying the, the German heaters. So I'm really excited to get this installed in the bus. There's a couple of other things I need to get sorted out before I can. Um, but yeah, this is a cool purchase. Like all the Chinese kits, it comes with absolutely everything you need. So I've got the water pump, I've got uh, what looks like a really solid muffler. Now, I've seen a few of the, uh, the Chinese air heater kits and the muffler is usually pretty junky. This baby's heavy and it's solid. I don't know if you can see how thick that is. That's a, that's a solid muffler and it's not a straight through muffler too. So it's got a bit of baffle going on in there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, water pump I showed you. It's got things like non-return valves and the full wiring loom and everything. Fuel line. Uh, actually, interestingly, the fuel pump has a non-return valve, unlike uh, some of the diesel air heaters I've seen. Uh, mounting brackets and filters and a big box of all of the fittings. A, a big bag, rather, of all of the fittings that you need. So it, it literally comes with everything you need to install it. So keep an eye out because I will definitely be doing a video on that. It has you know, intakes, it even has a bit of heater hose uh, to help with the installation. A good Good solid exhaust. I mean, this is oh, this is this is really solid compared to some of the exhausts that I've seen, and even right down to a fuel pickup to go in your diesel tank. So, so a very well set up kit. Um, everything you need. That's JP Heaters. There'll be a link down in the description to buy it from AliExpress. Um, Maybe someday in the future I'll sell them. Now related to the diesel heater, I have this. Now, it's a stainless steel box. Not that exciting. This is, I think it's called a Genesis 2 water heating system. Now, what this does is you literally bolt you literally bolt this heater to the side of it and so the, the, the liquid heater or the uh, boiler as it's often called that runs on diesel um, internally it burns the diesel heats up uh, coolant and the coolant is piped into here now this is a stainless steel box. Inside this is another stainless steel box which is insulated from the outside box and that would be full of coolant, uh, engine coolant, you know, standard radiator fluid. Now, um, also inside that is a plate heat exchanger. So, with the heater running this will be sitting here at uh, about 80 degrees or something. Um, has like a little radiator cap, etc. Now, so this will be sitting at about 80 degrees. Inside it is a 
is a heat exchanger that can heat water. So water comes in through the bottom here, goes through the heat exchanger and comes out the top here very bloody hot. Too hot in fact to be, of, uh, to be safely used. So in the top, so in the top will go this. Now this is um, a tempering valve. Uh, what it does is it measures the temperature of the water. Uh, it, how does it work? It measures the temper of, temperature of the water and adds enough cold water to get it to whatever temperature you set. So this is kind of aimed at being at about 38 degrees, but can run anything from 20 through to maybe 50 degrees. So what that means is uh, a couple of things. Firstly, it means that you use less hot water because you're heating the water up to hotter than you need it, and then adding cold water to it. So you get a you know you get a higher pressure, I guess, but you get you know much more flow. Uh, of warm water than the hot water that you're using. And secondly is it keeps things safe so that there's no risk of um, a bad burn. I mean water at 80 degrees is going to hurt. So that all comes as part of this kit and um, like all Australian kits, this kit, this came from Australia, couldn't find anything anywhere near like it anywhere else in the world when I've done all my searching that I've been doing. So again comes with everything that you need to install it. Um, very, very cool. Now, additionally, it has two more ports here. Now, these are really important. These are coolant ports that are part of the coolant system. So, from what I can gather, it's a little bit hard to, to follow. I haven't had a really good read through the instruction manual or anything, but from what I can gather, the coolant comes in through, in and out of these two ports. Now then it then circulates around through the plate exchanger uh, internally and in and out of these two ports. Now that means I can run these to a radiator type heater or um, like in a car, in a car when you turn on the heater in a normal car, um, what you're doing is you've got coolant that's come from, that's been heated up uh, with waste heat from the engine and that's uh, got a little hot little radiator in the underneath the dash and a, and a fan blows air through it which makes the car nice and warm so that's where hot air you know usually comes from so what this does is I can effectively run exactly the same system a little hot air heater in fact I, I just might do that uh, a, a cheap second hand one out of a wreck or something like that and um, then I can blow hot air around the vehicle and or have radiant heaters like, um, I, don't know, I don't know, it depends where you grew up, like you have in school. Anyway, that's a very cool little piece of kit. Very expensive. I didn't really want to spend quite that much money on it. But like I say, I, I, I couldn't find anything that came close to this in terms of design. And uh, it's it's and, and and it's kind of perfect. So between the two of these items, that means I have the ability to heat both the vehicle uh, once I add some radiant heaters to it and my water. Now um, that really ticks off two quite. That ticks off two quite important things uh, in one, and um, heating, water heating, and vehicle heating are both quite expensive items. So I'm kind of glad I can I can get that all done in one go. Next up is another big heavy thing. Actually, it's and, it, and it's it's kind of a little bit boring, but it's pretty bloody it has a boring job. This is a 250 amp circuit breaker, DC circuit breaker. Um, really important that it's DC. Uh, DC currents are really hard on circuit breakers um, when they trip or when you turn them on and off. So these things have, um, 
I don't know. You'd have to look it up. They, they, they have a spark discharge setup or something along those lines. They use magnets and stuff, and the, and um, they, they, well, they handle they handle the DC current when you turn it on and off. Now this is this is a big switch. This is this is a really big switch. Um, 250 amps. So this will be protecting my um, my large inverter which is good for 4,000 watts or something like that 4 kilowatts for a short period uh, 2 kilowatts constantly and no I don't I don't know what I'm going to use that for um, I just think it would be good to have a very high powered inverter so it has these um, these little flaps to, to you know like to protect your positive and negative cables because you're talking about some real serious power here I mean this is going to trip at 250 amps now I don't even know what that is what is that five kilowatts or something um, two four no it's not even it's more than that maybe six kilowatts that's it's it's huge power I'll have a link to this in the description below um, I get if, if you're in New Zealand there is no cheaper way to buy this Together with this, and equally important, is a little momentary on-off button. Uh, what, what this does is, funnily enough, it protects this um, by giving me what, um, I guess what I've described as a pre-charge circuit. And I've got a box of, I've got, I, I got a pack of four of them. And um, I think that I think they're even waterproof. Um, they might be designed for motorbikes or something like that. But, but so the logic of them is that <clears throat> when when you connect an inverter, a large, particularly a large inverter, the first thing it needs to do is it charges up uh, some pretty big capacitors. Now that takes that capacitors charge really really fast, so that can that can have quite a surge of current. And so invariably, when you hook up any inverter, you'll get a spark. The bigger the inverter, the bigger the spark, and you can do a bit of damage with that spark. And if in the event of turning it on with a switch, that spark will be happening inside here. Now, now this should be more than capable of handling that that sudden rush of current but it'll it'll wear it out faster so the trick I'm going to use um, so the trick I'm going to use is to have a pre-charge circuit now the way that works is you have a smaller switch and a load like maybe a resistor or uh, maybe just a light bulb or something like that so you run a light bulb across this switch so you turning you turn it on with a load on it now what that means it'll slow the current going uh, into the capacitors and then once they're charged um, then there'll be no more flow of current and the light bulb will go out at which time it is a good time to switch this on it's kind of the plan um, I don't claim to know a huge amount about how that works but like everything, I'm going to find out and I'll do a video and then we'll all know. Still with circuit breakers, <coughs> um, <coughs> decided the best way to protect my panels is not to have some sort of lightning surge protector thing. It's simply to have a two-pole two circuit breaker. So again, DC, really important that they're DC, which means they're also, um, or in, in, in the case of these, they're also polarized, so they have a positive and negative to them. And what they are is a, is a simple circuit breaker, but they operate two poles together, which means they disconnect both the positive and the negative at the same time. So they fully disconnect, the, in, in, in my case, the solar panels. Um, I've got a bunch of them. <clears throat> I've got well, actually more than this, but I've got a bunch of them. So they'll they'll disconnect the 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 solar panels from 
they will isolate the solar panels so they'll disconnect the, both the positive and the negative coming down from the solar panels um, to everything else <clears throat> like everything uh, great value from AliExpress pretty bloody quick delivery and links down in the description um, I have like an affiliate thing with AliExpress so um, every time someone buys one of these I get like I don't know five cents or something like that so that's pretty good if you buy one of these I might get um, maybe a dollar like because these are these are a bit more expensive than it's not a cheap piece of kit but good value um, on the switches still there's a lot of lots of little electrical things that have bought this time these are a simple on off switch um, I've, I've gone for the two pole uh, unlit because I don't want little fancy lights on them but these come in a, a million different variations so this is a simple two pole on and off switch now what that means is that when it's on uh, these two are connected and when it's off they are not um, really straightforward you can have them in any color they could have a little light that comes on when they're on or you could wire it so they have a little light that's on when they're off or they could be momentary they could be two three pole normally on normally off whatever you like um, very cheap I've got like a whole bunch of them and I'm kind of thinking of using them for little light switches and stuff like that so um, where I've put in the little down lights I think I'll put one next to each down light perhaps or next to a group of down lights and uh, <coughs> for little things like that they'll be quite good they're not capable of very much I think I think they're theoretically good for 10 amps I can't recall not for a low load situation like turning lights on and off um, or, or, or operating control circuits so I quite like the idea of you know like something that controls something else um, I run out of these I ran out of these a little while back so I've just bought some more spade terminals or um, uh, I don't know I don't know if they call them spade terminals or they're, they're a flat terminal um, I've got blue ones and red ones. They're both actually, I think, I think they're both actually the same diameter. They're just different colours. Um, so they're just a crimpable terminal. I'm, I'm, I'm not actually that keen on them, but I do have quite a lot of things like the switches I just showed you that need them. So um, I've got some. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure how uh, if I'll actually stick with these or if I'll go with ones that require assembly um, in that in that these have got the insulation built into them and I think that kind of maybe stops you from knowing whether you've crimped it right or not but we'll see how we get on now now these are pretty bloody cool there's a cool little thing it's it's a buck converter which of which I've already got a few and I'll, I'll, I'll I've already showed you a few and a couple of other videos. I've used them for different purposes. Where they will probably shine the most is in charging. Um, when you need, well, charging usually has quite a specific need for voltage and current. An old iPhone, for example, or an old phone in general, is going to want 5 volts at about half an amp, which is pretty standard old USB charging voltages. Um, uh, a new laptop uh, would still have a USB plug, but that would probably want 19 volts or something like that at, um, I don't know, at whatever, whatever it works out at to get um, up around 100 watts or something like that. So, buck converters have their place. Now, um, I've already been using some to charge various things like, like these uh, Sony speakers, and they work and they work great. I've, I've played with charging up a lead acid battery with one. 
Um, that's getting kind of close to the edge of its capabilities. So I bought some gruntier ones. Now I've only bought a couple of these and and they are rated at 300 watts. Yeah, 300 watts, that's a fair bit of grunt. That's like, I don't know, it's 12 amps or something at, at 24 volts or, or considerably more at lower voltages. So this, this is good for charging a laptop um, or possibly for running a diesel heater. Now, this diesel heater is 24 volts, so I don't need a step down uh, but converter for it but a lot of them are 12. And I think um, as like a battery charger, I, you, could, you, could, you could take the approach that my LEAF takes of pretty much just giving the battery 13 volts or something all the time. So it's kind of always in float. It never really charges the battery. And that's usually enough to get it to do its thing if you haven't got a very big job and the LEAF battery doesn't have a very big job. But it's, and it turns on and off, I don't know how often. So maybe with something, um, maybe using a similar sort of logic, I could maintain a battery that could do little 12 volt jobs and cope with the spikes that might go above the 20 odd amps that this is probably capable of. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I've got two of those. Like everything else, links down in the description. We have some more stuff. Oh. Now last and least on this occasion, uh, some little magnets. Here's just two of them. Now they, are, they really are small. Um, and they really are strong. It's like quite hard to get them apart. So, oh, and then accidentally put them back together again. Um, so that's that's it there. That is, I think, a five mil square. It's that neodymium or whatever the hell it is. Uh, they're very powerful little magnets. The reason I've bought these is to hang my fairy lights on my corrugated steel ceiling like this so that I can move it and put it somewhere else. It's always exciting when uh, boxes arrive on my desk at work um, but this has been an extra exciting thing. I mean the, 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 that, that stainless steel tank is probably the heaviest um, item I've ever bought from overseas uh, where the um, Whereas the, the diesel heater is, I think, maybe the coolest. So, <clears throat> so thank you to Selena from JP Heaters. Um, I'm really looking forward to playing with that heater, getting it set up. Uh, obviously, I need to fully install it, but before that, I will definitely want to have a play with it and make sure it uh, performs as well as I expect it to perform. And it certainly does look like a quality product. I mean, I've, I've bought a lot of stuff um, out of China and some of it is, well, it's, it's you get what you pay for, you know? Um, now, this is the, this brand, JP Heaters, is one of the more expensive brands of diesel heaters and stuff. That you'll find on AliExpress, and there's probably quite a good reason for that. I mean, when I look at at how this kit's put together, when I look at the weight and the 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 um, you can kind of see why it costs that wee bit more. And I say a wee bit more because it's still about a third of um, the cost of its um, more official competitors. So I can't wait to test out a bit of this stuff. Um, you will no doubt see it all in future videos. If you're stuck at home, um, I hope I hope you guys are doing all right. Kia kaha, keep strong, and um, if you've got nothing else to do, hey, watch some more of my videos, and and maybe you'll learn from some of my mistakes. But otherwise, like and subscribe anyway. Hit all the buttons here and there and somewhere and uh, hopefully that means we'll see you again soon. Take care. Matewa.